Greetings everyone. Today we're going to uh, use Scratch to create a multiplication game uh, which should be applicable to grades 3 through 5. Um, when you look at the uh, project page you see that uh, there's a little storyline there. It says uh, our friend Arthur needs to learn his multiplication tables. Uh, everyone at his home these days are very busy. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a game for Arthur where, with the help of the Scratch Cat, he can practice his multiplication skills. Okay? Um, and the first instruction here, it says, uh, click on the animation. Uh, and uh, this will give you a sense what the uh, game is going to look like. The Scratch Cat asks a question. Uh, and depending on if you get the answer correct or not, uh, either the Scratch Cat celebrates or says he's sorry and gives you the correct answer, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Scratch website and uh, you should log into your account and create a new project. So I'm going to assume you have already created an account for yourself. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And the name of this project is going to be Multiplication Game. So let's call that Multiplication Game. And the first instructions here, and I will uh, start this so that uh, you can see from here. Uh, the instructions here says that uh, when the game starts, have the Scratch Cat greet the player and tell a bit about the game. And if you uh, get confused about the instructions, you can always click uh, for the hints here. So here the hint says you could use these blocks uh, when the green flag is clicked block and the say block uh, to have the scratch cat say uh, a, an introduction or and a welcome. So let's do that. Uh, and observe that the scratch, uh, the, the, the uh, scratch projects always start uh, with a default uh, sprite, uh, which is the Scratch Cat. Uh, because we're going to use this, uh, I'm not going to change that. And you can also see that the Scratch Cat has two costumes. And this will be handy in a minute when we have the Scratch Cat maybe do a dance. Um, so we start by dragging a when the green flag is clicked block. And what we want to then do is we want to say for a few seconds a greeting for example you could say hello uh, and maybe uh, welcome to the multiplication game okay so this way we greet the player uh, next the scratch cat is going to randomly choose numbers random numbers one through ten and uh, it's going to ask the player to multiply these two numbers. In order to store these two numbers, we're going to create two variables. Uh, remember, variables in computer science are these uh, things you could use to store, uh, for example, numbers or text, etc. In this case, we're going to use them for storing numbers. Uh, and if you look at the hint here, it will tell you uh, that you can go to data uh, palette and you can make a variable uh, there so let's do that together I go to data I select make variable uh, my first number is going to be called first number and my second number is going to be called second number um, I don't want to have these displayed on the stage so I'm going to uncheck these boxes Okay, so we have created two variables where we're going to store our random numbers. And then the instructions here says store these numbers, these random numbers 1 through 10, in both of these variables. So let's see the hint for that. Uh, there's a set block, set first number, set second number. And there's a random number uh, generating block. So let's actually use these. So I'm going to have two set blocks. The first one is for setting the first number. The second is for setting the second number. 
And if you go to the operators menu, you're going to realize that there is a random number generating block and it is by default 1 through 10, which is perfect for our needs. So what we are doing here is we are randomly picking numbers 1 through 10 and storing them into the first number and then into the second number. Okay? And then we're going to have the scratch cat ask the player what the product of these two numbers is. This, I would say, is the trickiest step in the whole project. Let's get a hint here. Uh, we're going to ask a question to the users, so we're going to use the ask and wait block. Uh, and in order to create a long sentence like, what is 7 times 4 question mark, we need to use the join block, but using one of them is not enough. You need to have several of them nested so you could have this long sentence uh, uh, in it. So let's see how we could do that. We go to the sensing menu, and in the sensing menu, we have the ask block. And let's empty this slot right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create um, several um, words that needs to be joined. So let's actually clean up these things. So I'm going to have, um, and you could duplicate these by right clicking on them. So I'm going to duplicate and maybe one more time duplicate and you'll see how I'm going to use it. So I'm going to say what, what is, and I'm going to say the first number multiplied by, multiplication symbol I'm going to use capital X, multiplied with second number and I'm going to put here a question mark. So what is the first number multiplied by the second number? Uh, it might be helpful to put a little bit of space before and after the capital X so you have some breathing room. And then when we are done we put this inside the ask block. Okay. So at this point you could actually check uh, this. It says uh, welcome and then it says, what is uh, 6 times 7? Apparently, the random numbers it picked are 6 and 7. Uh, now, I can type here 42, which is the correct answer. And even, even if I check this, you're going to notice nothing happens because we did not uh, tell the scratch cat what to do if a correct or wrong answer is given. And that's our next step. All right, uh, and if you need a big uh, hint here, and we did this together, but you could have clicked here and it tells you how you could use nested join blocks to create this long sentence. All right, the last step here, it says if the answer, if the player answers uh, the question correctly, you should have the scratch cat congratulate the player and uh, let them uh, know that the answer was correct. Otherwise, uh, we need to let the player know that the answer was wrong, but we also have to give the correct answer, okay? And you could click here for a hint. Uh, because you're going to have a decision being made, uh, we're going to use the if-then-else uh, block. And then uh, we're going to use the answer that the, uh, the user gave and we're going to compare it to the actual product of the first and the second numbers. So let's actually see how this is done. Uh, we go to the control blocks. There you have an if then else uh, option. And uh, we're going to compare in a minute the answer that is given by the user. So we go to sensing block to grab the answer. So the, if the answer is equal to the product of the first number multiplied with the second number, then we're going to have the scratch cat say something like, uh, congrats, you got it. Okay? Uh, if it didn't, if the user didn't do it correctly, we're going to... Uh, say a couple of things. We're going to first say that the answer is uh, wrong, but we also have to give the correct answer. So as you can probably guess, we're going to 
create a long sentence. So we're going to use multiple uh, join blocks. I'm going to have here a join block here. Uh, so let's see if this is going to be enough. So you could say something like, sorry, the correct answer is, and here um, we're going to create, and actually we could actually duplicate the existing thing here. You could say, um, and you know what I realized? Uh, two of them is going to be enough. So I'm getting rid of the second join block. This is good. Sorry, the correct answer is the product of the first and the second uh, numbers. Okay? So let's test this. Uh, welcome. We're given a product. Uh, 63 is the correct answer. Uh, when we do that, it congratulates us and then it's uh, finished. Uh, let's intentionally give a wrong answer. It says, what is 5 times 1? So let's say I misunderstood it and I write the answer as 51. Uh, it says, sorry, the correct answer should have been 5, which is 5 times 1. All right? All righty, so this is the base project. If you have gotten this far, you have done wonderfully. Uh, but now let's uh, look at some of the... Uh, take it further activities, which makes things a little bit more exciting. Uh, you can choose a nice background for the stage from the Scratch uh, Backdrop library. So to do that, I go to Stage, I go to Backdrops, and if you uh, hover over here, you're going to say you can choose a backdrop from the existing library. Um, I am going to go to Indoors, and I personally like this room number one, so I'm going to Double click on that, okay? And you can experiment with various uh, 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 backdrops. Uh, you may also need to move the Scratch Cat around. Uh, that will be helpful. So this is uh, the first extension, the Take It Further activity. The second activity that you could uh, explore is when the player answers correctly, you could have the Scratch Cat do a little celebratory dance, like you see it here. Um, so you could also use some sound effects, etc. So let's see how we could do that. I go to uh, the script for the Scratch Cat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct this somewhere here. I'm going to have the Scratch Cat switch between his costumes. You can notice that the first one and the second one, if you keep pressing in succession, it will look like a little dance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the looks menu and I'm going to select the next costume so that uh, the scratch cat is going to keep changing costumes uh, for about 10 times. This is a little bit too fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put there a tiny bit of a wait time, maybe 0 0.25. Uh, let's check that. Not too bad. A little bit too slow. Maybe let's make that 0 0.1. That might be... Okay. All right. So you could have the Scratch Cat uh, do a little dance when you have... Um, when, the, when the user have answered the question correctly. All right. Let's test all of these and observe. I put the block right after the congrats uh, block where we're congratulating the user. So, welcome. Here's a product, 10 times one is 10. Let's give the correct answer first time. Uh, congratulate, you got it. It do, does a little dance. I actually want to have the cat say something like woo-hoo while uh, it's congratulating and dancing. Uh, but when the dance is finished, I want it to say nothing, so at the end of that loop, I put a say nothing block. So I just empty uh, the, the, the empty slot there, so uh, it's just uh, going to say nothing. Okay? So let's test it one more time. Welcome to my application game. What is 10 times 10? It's 100. Congrats, you got it. Woohoo, it does a stance, and it's done. I play it again. This time, let's intentionally put a wrong answer. So let's say I accidentally put, oh, 8 times 5 is 85. And it's going to say, sorry, the correct answer is 40. 
Okay, it looks like we did it. Uh, I hope this was enjoyable to you, uh, and I wish you all the best uh, with your uh, future projects. Take care.